Okay, good. So this should have been pretty straightforward because this is just an example of the general nucleophilic attack on carboxylic acid derivatives that we talked about one or two sessions ago, where we're just exchanging one of these L groups for a different L group over here. And it's good, it looks like you guys are getting comfortable with the protonation ideas. This is not a great leaving group, so if possible, it would be nice to give it a proton before it leaves. Well, there was a convenient way to do that because after the hydrazine attacks, it has one more proton than it needs. So we just transfer these protons. And then we're able to do this with a fairly nice leaving group over here. And that would give us these. And now we can say that this carbon over here is labeled with hydrazine. Now this might. NH2, the bottom. You are correct. I'm not doing very good with my hydrogen, huh? <laughs> so let's see. Yes, I was wrong all the time. So this had one hydrogen, so then after it picked up another hydrogen, it should have two hydrogens. Right. That's right, I should be much more careful about that, because the hydrogens actually are one of the hardest parts, so I should try to be more careful about that. Well, what we've seen here then is that hydrazine does attack amides, and it's very easy to see whether an amide got attacked because it's got this big double nitrogen on it afterwards. Well, let's see how that helps us in doing our detective work yeah. on peptides. Now, remember, we already have a way to figure out who the N-terminus was. We use Sanger's reagent and Dancil chloride, and the reason those work is they only label the N-terminus, putting aside the, the side chain on lysine, lysine, they only label the N-terminus. Now we're going to try to find a way to label this, to identify the C-terminus, and we're going to use hydrazine to do that. But this is actually more subtle than the Sanger's reagent. What is the hydrazine going to do? Well, the hydrazine is going to label everybody but the C-terminus. Hydrazine is, we want to label everybody but the C-terminus, and then it should be very easy to tell which amino acid was at the C-terminus, because it'll be the only one that doesn't have hydrazine on it. This is like the reverse logic that we used for the Sanger's reagent. The thing that was Sanger's reagent was the thing that was at the N-terminus, but the thing that doesn't get labeled by the hydrazine will be the thing that we knew was at the C-terminus. And we can see what the logic of that is going to be over here. C-terminus must be O minus, though. That's right. Just so the first thing we have to do is adjust the pH so that we get the O minus form on the carboxy groups. We know that all carboxy groups have two different forms, neutral and negative. Well, we just simply have to adjust the pH so that we know that the carboxy end will have a negative charge. Is the, I thought it was that the hydrazine actually does the acid base with the... Do you think that's what happens? I think so. Yeah, because that's, I think that's the whole point of how you know it, right? Like... You might be right about that. Uh, I, I guess you could do it either I way. Yes, but... The but I, I think you could do it either way, but no, it's not, it's not just that the hydrazine is taking the proton off. That's because the, the, the real thing that we know is that hydrazine is attacking everybody else. But I'm not, I'm really not, I, it seems like it can work either way. It's true that hydrazine is basic. So maybe we don't even have to adjust the pH. Maybe the hydrazine would just deprotonate things. Right, because a lot of times it seems in the problems, like he, pH doesn't seem like a factor anymore. Yeah, that's why we have that assumption. Okay, in that case, it sounds like you understood this better than I did. That sounds like I, I stand corrected there. So. So what I said before was wrong, and what you guys were saying sounds like it was better. I was asking you whether this would be a good electrophile, and you said no, and actually I said you were wrong, but actually it sounds like you're on the right track. This is not going to be a good electrophile because before the nucleophile can attack the carbonyl, this is just going to deprotonate. So that was a better answer than the one I gave before. So let's say that we put hydrazine in here. One second, yeah. sorry, just to clear. So, but isn't that still, doesn't that still go with what you say? Because didn't you, wasn't the whole point that when you have an O minus, it's not a good electrophile? That's right. I just didn't quite give the right explanation of how the O minus got it's there in the first place. It, it does the acid base first, making it right. O minus, right. and then that's what precludes it from being a good yeah. But my point is we need it to be O minus, just like you said, opposed to OH, because of the idea of electrophilic. Okay. Right? Okay. I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say, but I think you're on the right track. If we continue going through the problem, I think things will clarify. So let's say we take uh, excess hydrazine and we have this peptide here. How do we think that this hydrazine is going to react here? Well, for example, is the hydrazine going to attack this bond? Yes. So this will be labeled. Is the hydrazine going to attack this bond? Yeah. Is the hydrazine going to attack this? Well, no, it's just going to deprotonate the oxygen. And then once it's deprotonated the oxygen, we don't expect it to attack the carbonyl because now this is not electrophilic anymore. All right, and now we can already see how the hydrazine works. Is this fragment going to be Sorry, labeled with... Isn't there one more place? Yeah, there is. I, it'll be convenient to talk about that in a second, okay. but it's good that you're seeing that. Mm -hmm. But now we can see how the hydrazine works. Is this fragment going to be labeled with hydrazine? 
Yes. So we'll know that that was not the C terminus. Will this fragment be labeled with hydrazine? Yes. So we'll know that's not the C terminus. Will this be labeled with hydrazine? No. So we'll know that this must have been the C terminus because this is the one thing that was not labeled with the hydrazine. Now you're already noticing a complication that there is another bond that also gets attacked. Will this get attacked? So this side chain will also be labeled with hydrazine, but hopefully that's not going to confuse us very much because we should be able to see that this is just a side chain anyway. So we're, we're not surprised that sometimes side chains get attacked by hydrazine. That should not distract us from the main idea, which is that we'll know that this was the C terminus because it did not get attacked by the hydrazine. When that happens though, and hydrazine attacks it, what is the NH2 that falls off the gum? What do you think? NH4 plus? Let's see, I guess it depends what pH you're at. But um, we're, not, we're, not thinking, we're not thinking of doing this in acidic conditions. We're not thinking of doing this in acidic conditions, oh, so I suppose it would drop off as NH3. And it's not a uh, organic product, so we don't have to worry about it, right? Actually, the in, these problems, in these problems, actually very often they do show the ammonia and the ammonium. They don't just show the organic product, so definitely we should know that this would drop off. So that could be NH2. important. I've just noticed in all the predictive products, he's all, we've always had total acid hydrolysis. Mm -hmm. We've never had, it seems, hydrazine, or yeah, maybe I haven't touched it. So it would be NH3? That's right, because we're not under acidic conditions here. Yeah. Otherwise, this wouldn't be deprotonating. And why? We would put it in the box? I just don't want to miss points. That's why. It's because mm -hmm. of, but it's not a... If he says predict all products, then I would include the ammonia, unless he said to only include the organic products. Okay, because it doesn't have carbons. Right. Okay. Clarify. Okay. So we should draw what the products of this would be. So let's see what let's draw what the products would be after this step. I think these are the products that you had written. So we'd see that the hydrazine has labeled this fragment, this fragment, but not this fragment. So we would know that this was the C terminus. This fragment got labeled twice, but hopefully that wouldn't confuse us. We'd still know this is not the C terminus. That's one of the things we can use hydrazine for. One of the things we can use hydrazine for is identifying the C terminus. We'll always have that O minus, right? So it'll be clear to us, like, if there's a lot of different molecules, mm -hmm. we can just pinpoint directly to that. What if, though, the C terminus is in H2. Ah, then hydrazine doesn't work. So if the C, okay, if oh. the C terminus is aminated, then that would look like this. Okay. And now the hydrazine would attack here too, wouldn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't use that as a test for. He might. That he might look, use that, and then you'd have to say, "Gee, I can't tell what the C terminus is." Although, if if there there are, let's see. Yeah, I guess you could. Uh, no. So that you wouldn't be able to tell who the C terminus was in that point. That's right. At least not using not using hydrazine. At least not using hydrazine directly. Okay. We've discussed how hydrazine doesn't attack carboxylic acids; it just deprotonate it just deprotonates them. But it would attack a carboxy end that's been turned into an amide. We know that hydrazine is good at attacking amides. So this is a this is a drawback in the hydrazine. This is something it can't handle, or it's not very useful for us. Now we can look at something else that hydrazine is good for.